Welcome back. <laughs> Here we are, the Game to Love boys. We're still in quarantine and we're still scouring the tennis landscape for stuff to talk about, aren't we? The Jamie? desolated landscape. There's nothing there. <laughs> but yeah, like you say, trying to talk about something else again. Another podcast. Um, it seems like a long time since the last one. Obviously, we had Noah on. If you've not yeah. checked that already, go check it out. Um, and he sort of brought up quite a few interesting things, really, about different sides of tennis. He gave a very interesting dynamic, really, on the way tennis is at the moment, like especially regarding uh, the money focus at the top of the game. And that's going to bring us on to like our main topic of this video. Why you probably clicked on the video? You want to know about the whole efforts on the Dominic team thing? So do you want to kick us off with that, Ben? Yeah, well. Dominic team with some controversial uh, views, it seems. Uh, apparently, he is not up for giving his salary or his earnings, his max winnings to the lower ranked players. He says they don't really deserve it. They're not working hard enough, pretty much, uh, to be able to deserve the money that he has pretty much worked his socks off for. And it's was the, it's ruffled a few feathers, let's say, amongst the tennis community because obviously the big dogs like Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, they're pretty much the ones setting this up and very pro. Obviously, they're the ones with the most money. But yeah, you can't ones. really include them free, mate. They've got so much money, it doesn't even affect them so much. Well, that's why they're setting it up, obviously. They're yeah. setting it up because it's immaterial, really. You give 30k away, it's like pocket change, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, be asking all the other players to be doing the same. Yeah, you've obviously seen now number. Well, he's the number three in the world now. Yeah, yeah. yeah so number three in the world is making a stand. It's not really the right thing to be talking about in a in a situation we're in at the moment. Like everyone needs to be putting together more, and I just think the whole timing of it doesn't seem right to me. Uh, I can understand. Like I'm not going to come on here and slander him. Like I can understand his opinion to a to a level because he's come through the futures. He knows what it's like at the lower levels, and I don't doubt what he says. Like quote unquote, I'll get it here. He was talking about the younger players. Um, da, da, da. He was saying there's definitely a lot of players who don't subordinate everything their whole life everything, their whole life to the sport, who don't live that professionally and don't play the sport that professionally that they should. And to be honest, I, don't, I, I wouldn't really see why I should give players, give money to players like that. So I'll be honest, I'd rather give my money to people or organisations who, who would really, really need the money. So it's right. like on the, on the debate that he don't feel like they're really that dedicated and committed to the sport as what he was. And that's a big reason why he got to the top. However, I still feel like you need to give these people a chance to be able to see the future of tennis. Like, if you never give these players a chance now, they're never going to get one and their career is going to have to end because they're going to have to do other things. Yeah, he's probably just pointing towards maybe some journeymen who are in and around the, I don't know, the 150 to 400 mark who just sort of coast up and down the rankings, probably not trying as hard as they probably could. It's probably a living, but they're probably not really trying to get to the dizzy heights of Dominic Team's level. Yeah, yeah I probably agree. Just ha- probably just happy just to be earning money from it. But. It's a very, like, difficult thing to discuss, really, because it's, like, very uh, political, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, you've got the, it's, like, very right, right-wing, left-wing, and it's, like, where you sit on that spectrum. And, like, I don't want any of that on this podcast. I don't really like... I don't feel like that's needed in, in, our, in what we do. But yeah. in just to, like as an overview, it's like I can understand his comments in a way, but then I do feel like the way the sport is at the moment, it's not necessarily fair. Noah Rubin touched on it on the last podcast we had, and all the money is focused at the top. Like it doesn't seem a very good prize structure. You go into a Grand Slam or not even Grand Slams, like ATP, 250s and stuff like that, and it just seems to be that there's not a very good layout where the money's flowing down, down the levels, and it's all very focused on semi-finals, finals, the very top end, where it's not yeah. really necessarily fair. Like you touched on that Italian geezer who um, he's playing, Marcora. and he can't, yeah, Marcora, and he's like struggling to to make a living from it. And I'm sure, yeah. like that's just one example. There's loads of players like that. Like their their expenses are kind of outweighing what they're making to go to yeah. a tournament. 
And yes. you can't really be that motivated to go to a tournament if you think, mate, I'm going to end up ending this tournament with a loss, most probably. Yeah, well, think about his career. Up until he played in Poon, he, yeah, he'd only earned like 66,000 like, pounds or something for his yeah. whole career. And then within the course of two weeks or something or three weeks, he had managed to earn the same amount again just from a couple of ATP events. So the like the challenger events are earning people like next to nothing really, yeah, like yeah. in comparison. Yeah, yeah. But then but then you like I don't know, it's hard to it's, it's hard to say a, because it's a bit of a short term fix really what's going on. Like obviously we're yeah. in a, it's a, we're in a pandemic, it needs to be like quick solutions to people who don't have a job now. Because ultimately, yeah. they don't have a job right now, tennis players. No. But it's not just them. Like, it's, it's, loads of people in the world are losing their jobs. Um, but they're without a job. They're without having a solid income coming in. They've got sometimes families to support. Or like, you know, it's a, it's a tough world, man. If you don't have a job, it makes everything a bit harder. So it's like, we need to definitely dis- distribute this money around. But the bigger issue is like, when this comes back, tennis, say we all go back to normal next year, hopefully. The issue is still going to be there. Like, it's still going to be yeah. a, an element of this problem. So, this is the short term problem, but there's also long term problems in the game as well. I feel like yeah. um, team wasn't really addressing the long term implications. He was more looking at the short term in terms of now. Like, him, why should I give my money to people who didn't work as hard as me? In essence, he's not. He's not against the whole fact that the prize money situation at the moment is not correct, and that that should be no. proportioned like around the players much much more eat like better in a better way in a fairer much fairer system yeah a lot of players have been comparing it to golf and saying maybe it should be done a bit more in the way that golf How does golf do? uh, well golf i think that the tr- like the trickle down like to the players who finish like lower and lower down third fourth fifth like if there's a there's a better like distribution of all the money which actually mm. like people who make the cart that type of thing there's actually more chance of winning money and from the smaller events as well i think there's a bigger you get bigger rewards for actually winning these events or playing in those events and i think that's something that really needs to be looked into and because I, I might say something a bit controversial now <laughs> but i feel like it's important to say but tennis as a sport in general at the moment, I'm not sure if it's in, in the healthiest place. It could be. We've seen it before all these problems, all these pandemic and everything. We saw different events, especially women's events and other men's lower ranked events. You yeah. look at the streams, you watch some of the videos on tennis TV or whatever, and you look at the crowds, it's pretty empty. Yeah. And yeah. for a sport where the quality, I feel like the quality across the board from, say, 100 to 500, 600 is actually pretty high. Like, I was watching it. Like, it's very extremely high. Like, the yeah. level is incredible. And, like, what only separates them is sometimes just a different mentality, maybe a different <clears throat> physical presence or... Something Something that I want to say, uh, yeah, that highlights it. Uh, well, if we look at one of the players that we were following, like, really strongly, Rusa Vori, yeah. you see that that is the type of person nobody knows about. He yeah, comes it's not, up against nobody knows about. If you watch Rusevori on the streams, you look around; it's empty. No, but, but that's what I mean. He played Dominic Team and beat Dominic Team in straight sets. But everyone knows Dominic Team. No one knows Rusevori. He beat him. He yeah, but that's him natural, man, because of where he is in the ranking and Dominic Team of what obviously what he's achieved. Yeah, but that's what I mean. But there's no. That's what Noah touched on last time. He said, "I'm just no, not sure that tennis is in the, in the big, best place. They're not, they're not big enough. The players yeah. enough. No, 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 for sure." And that's where, like, behind the racket is, like, a brilliant thing. Hopefully that can encourage more fans. But in essence, I feel like something... I'm not sure. I don't have all the answers. If I had the answers, mate, I'd be working for the ATP. But yeah. it's like, maybe I well, think so. something needs to change. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I'll apply. <laughs> um, something needs to change where, like... There's also talking about the ATP WT merger. Is that the answer? Do you reckon having one unified sort of organisation would enable a different marketing strategy to be employed where more people are able to come to the sport? Would it attract more people? Are people going to be more invested in the sport? I'm not necessarily sure. I thought it was a brilliant idea at first. The more I've looked into it, I'm not so sure now. I think it's, uh, I think having two two different entities, it takes, it like sort of uh, allows, they sort of can feed off each other in a way. 
Yeah, I think you make they, on the one, it's maybe not necessarily the best business uh, op, uh, decision to make. I think they both work in a negative manner if there is really somebody who's dominant at the top of the game, though. I don't, don't think either of them, at the moment, the women's game is just sort of benefiting in a way only from the fact that there isn't anybody who's really leading the show in the women's game. So you get more of a competitive element and you could sell that more. The men's game is literally just the top three in a small group and then everybody else you don't really hear about. But looking at that small group, I would say they're extremely exciting tennis players to watch. I love watching their matches. Like a lot of the players in the top 100, top 200, they're extremely talented players. And I feel like something's not right in the way tennis is at the moment where they're not getting enough, um, it's not getting enough audience for what it deserves, in my Mm. opinion. Maybe that's just me being biased. I love tennis. But I think there's something needs to be done in the sport to sort of get more people involved in the sport. Maybe it could be to do with funding. Bringing back to the very basics, very basics, just looking at the UK in general, is there enough uh, tennis courts in the UK? Would that help people's love for tennis to grow? If there's more tennis, <laughs> more people playing, you look at Spain, there's like courts every, everywhere. I think that one of the real problems is with getting people to watch tennis is everybody's solely, obviously, focused on the Grand Slams all the time, obviously. They're the main ones. That's when the most of the people start watching yeah, the, tennis. The, the, not the real fans, though. Like, no, no. The, the passive sort of fans. But you, what we really need to work out is how many real hardcore fans are there. And that, I don't think there's... I think that's, that's what I'm trying to aim at. Like, I feel like that needs yeah. to grow, that side of tennis. Because I think that there's a lot of people who play it, but are there even those players that interested in watching challenges or watching like ITF matches or seeing players being built up? But they they don't if they don't introduce players who are someone like Alcaraz Garcia or Rusevori or Jamino Valero, these like mm-hmm. 18, 16, 18 year old plus of them growing up. There needs to be something done about it because other sports promote their superstars that are coming up in such yeah, a different way. Can you see how this is linked, sort of the prize money issue and, and the whole... It's basically basic economics. If the, the, the higher the demand, the better, yeah. isn't it? In terms of like... Yeah, It's the, the demand and supply. So if you have more people watching it, in theory, it's going to generate much more money, which is then allow, going to allow the players to have more money shared, shared between them and then allow the sport to grow. It's important that the sport grows. And yeah. well, I'm not saying it's gone stagnant. Of course it's not. Like tennis is probably, I'm pretty sure it is growing, but just not maybe at the rate I would like to see it growing. And I think changes need to be made to enable that, whether that's more funding from governments or getting kids involved in tennis more. Well, maybe um, like the, but little things know. like that. It was gonna, if you're playing tennis, I feel like it's a, it definitely helps where the fact that you can appreciate the difficulty of the game because, mate, when you're new to tennis, yeah, do you know how difficult it is to get the ball over the net? <laughs> exactly. So it's a very difficult, it's a very uh, fine sport, and it's amazing. Like the level watching, say, like Nadal, Federer, Djokovic, all of these guys playing tennis, it's like it's an art. And I feel like so many people would appreciate it more if they was involved in tennis. Well, think about how many tournaments in the there are. To grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. But think how many tennis tournaments that you see on TV or on tennis TV. Or even some of these women's tournaments, which are WTA events, where you have empty stadiums and they're yeah, finals lines. and semi Could there not be something done where they actually offer like tennis clubs, like their people there, free tickets to go and see the... Because there's so many spares. People would go and watch it. They don't have to pay for it. So at least you would get people in watching it. And like that would be a way to spread the word a little well that's what they do do for that the challenger tour and stuff a lot of the challenger tour events if you didn't know that already if you're watching you can go on the atp challenger website and you can literally go and get tickets for free for all these places a lot of them times you just turn up at the at the box office at the event and you can just go nothing nothing you sit on a little uh it's not gonna be the most luxurious place but like a bench it's very pretty location some of these challenge events are held in and um you see them brilliant tennis so i don't see why not why you wouldn't want to do that 
But like you say, some of the bigger events, maybe they could do more things like that, offering free tickets and stuff like, like that. The women's, I think, especially because I've noticed in some of the women's events, <clears throat> you'll have. Well, we had that one case where we had our girl Heather Watson. She was playing in the final in Acapulco, and there was like an, a third of the stands were filled. Uh, and then as soon as she was finished, Rafa comes on. Obviously, the whole place is you couldn't see a spare seat. So it's just there needs to be something done just to get people filling those seats. Mm. I don't know how it you is tricky. It is tricky because at the end of the day, you're always the best players are always going to sell out the most. It's going to be easier to sell them seats. <clears> you know what I mean? It's not really yeah. like, but like there's a lot of brilliant players who are lower ranked, and you can watch just as an exciting match. Maybe not at the same level, but it's ex- extremely exciting match. Do you not think they're suffering though? That these young, these lower ranked players suffering because if there's no one there, no one's paying. They could probably get less money if there's nobody there watching. I don't know. Maybe they would get more money if there was pe- more people watching the event. Yeah, no. Well, of, this... course, of course, it's going to work like that. Not in, not directly, but that will. That will the more people watching, yeah, the better, events, obviously. But, but that's what I mean. Like. And how do you expect these younger players to grow and to actually, if there's no money in it... Or yeah, but these younger players saying, as well, we need to put a bit of... Um, I'm going to put a bit of team on this. They need to prove themselves as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. They need to be able to... You need to be able to play with no one there and show what, how much grit and determination you want to get to. Yeah. I think that does make you as a player. And definitely did team did go through that. Because I remember watching him play him when he was a nobody... And he had, he always had more, he just seemed to have more drive than any other player he played against. Whether he, yeah. whether they were better than him or he was better than them, he seemed to just have the, some crazy drive. And like That's a lot of it. other pros talk of him as like his <laughs> mental edge is like next level. However, we've seen recently the frailties of his mental edge in terms of getting to the big tournaments and sort of bottling as per se, big moments. But that's going to come hopefully with him. Um, like back so. to the issue of like, what can we do? You say fill the stadiums with just, free tickets and stuff. What other uh, options are there, do you reckon? Because uh, another thing, this is my opinion, do you actually think that tennis is in need for um, like a rebound? A shake I think it needs a shake-up of some description just because... But well, why? What was what, no, it to that conclusion? Is it to do with the prize money thing or...? No, uh, I think that no one's really thinking about life after the big three. And I don't think anybody's thinking about the life after someone like well, Serena Williams, but like those big names, when they're gone, we need to start making something like for the future now. Otherwise, when they go and they all retire, we're going to be left with people who no one are really interested in, and the whole sport is I, uh, in jeopardy. I have, I have one idea. I think the power of technology is something we can utilize, like, like greatly in this situation. So we're in, a, we're in a time where technology is dominating everything, mate. Look what we're doing now. We're doing a podcast over Zoom. Technology is there. What we need to have is like you see with like football and Premier League and stuff like that, it's just more broadcasters. That's where the money's at. More stuff on Sky. Why don't they have lower, yeah. lower ranked events on Sky or BT Sports? These, these companies who have the money to be able you to, to or, or not even players. that. Even something a bit more forward thinking. Amazon. Amazon Prime Video. They recently covered the Premier League over Christmas time. They, they have Day. some tennis on them. Yeah, and they have some tennis, but I feel like <laughs> that can. They did do. They have a lot. They have a few women's matches as well. So I was watching yeah. them. But that's something which I think can to, can definitely grow, and there needs to be more of it because know, people, but... if they're watching it and they get involved in it and they see how amazing it is, then it's just down to the tennis players to perform. They're on the pedestal. Then they, then it's all up to them. Yeah, but... It's all down to the ATP and WTA and their promotion, but how they promote the players. Because if somebody turns up on a, I don't know, on a match sheet, and then you just flick over onto Amazon and it says Rusevori is up against, I don't know, Batchinger or someone. Yeah. Like if you don't know who either of those players are, are you going to click on it? No, that's probably the, not. That's the thing. And that's and the hopefully problem. they will click on it. Let's say I'll watch a bit. Let's see what yeah, tennis is. If, see what this tennis if, is. If it was built up better, though, like because you just got to make yourself make a name for yourself a little bit. But they could help by doing I don't know some promotional stuff for each of the matches or doing something advertising it on YouTube or advertising it 
if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, they could be, if you watch tennis regularly, they have ways of pinging it up on your screen. Look, this guy undefeated in his last 12 matches against this guy who's also under, like you could be playing it like a boxing style yeah. uh, way of advertising, like, because that's what sells. Yeah, and another thing with tennis, which I think could be improved, is the layout of the different tours. Yeah. So you've got like the the ITFs, the ATP sort of uh, main draw, and the Challenger uh, ATP Challengers. Yeah. Yeah. With that, I feel like there could be sort of one uniform, unified sort of ranking system. Actually, I don't know mm. because I like, I do like the ITFs. I think that is good because it sort of encourages growth and it like yeah, it, it, it's good to have that, but. I'm not sure exactly. I've not really thought about it, but just have a better system where viewers are able to sort of know where that player is at. So more yeah. visibility at what level they are. So they can look at, say, the like of a Rusevora and they'll be like, they'll see that he's like, he's at this kind of level and he's playing in an ATP 250 tournament or what does that mean? Or he's playing in the challenger. What does that mean? There's just people need to be educated more about the different t- tennis the tournament types and Definitely. I think there's like, I didn't know I didn't know until that long ago to be honest and I it's like disconnect about the point system I don't think people even really understand how the points work in tennis a lot of the people who are just watching it exactly that's what I'm saying so something needs to be done there to sort of simplify it I'm not sure what and maybe if they had an ATP WT merger they could they could sort of look upon this and do something around it but I feel like that personally like I don't want to be sound stupid but a more simplified game and simplified everything will definitely help people. Yeah. It's natural, mate. People don't want to be watching thing and trying to work out what's going on all the time. No. Well, that's that's why a lot of people just tune because in. Because you have tennis all throughout the year, but people don't know about that. They don't know about the Grand Slam. <laughs> They're thinking, what's the point of them playing that? What's this for? Is it just like a, a one-off game? Is it just a friendly... People... What is it? They don't, they don't know what's going on. And if they were getting think... involved in it, they know what's happening. I think that would be brilliant. I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but I think they can utilise technology to be able to do that, maybe through marketing and the way they sort of broadcast them. Through like all these streaming services we've got now, people can watch it on their phones. Yeah. Well. Yeah, yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, it's, There's so much different opportunities, I think. And I don't I just, feel like they're really up with the times. Well, if we get... Well... If we get to speak to a few uh, players in the upcoming podcast, so we've got a few, a uh, couple of players lined up, ready, we can uh, speak to them and touch on this and see their views on the whole situation. Because uh, I think it'd be very interesting to get it from a player perspective as well, just to see what if they feel that like they're being mistreated or they feel that they're not being promoted in, a, in the right way to actually get them to the best level that they could achieve mm. uh, well yeah we'll we'll see that we sort of spiraled off there we're talking about dominic team so quickly just to touch on that what was actually what's your opinion on his comments in like a few in like a few sentences or whatever well you see i see where he's coming from i mean i don't think it's really in the spirit of the whole thing really at the moment i think the way, the way everyone's been hit i i think just go along with it for now and like if he's only been asked to donate thirty k or something, no, it's not thirty k. It's less than that, I believe. I oh, was it less than that? Well, maybe I mean, just, no, maybe no. Sorry, it's, maybe it's thirty k. But this is what I mean for somebody who's he made a lot of money last year as well. But I don't think that should be. Oh, just it shouldn't be. Well, doesn't mean you have to pay more. But I'm, no, I'm not saying you should have to pay more. But I'm just saying he's only been he's been asked to pay thirty k. He made the final of the Australian Open and yeah, I agree he's, I don't think it's really... a good look I don't think it's a good look personally it's, and I think that it's... he should be very forthcoming with that money regardless of his comments about people's attitudes on the, on the lower down I think he should be given that money and I think that is in a time like this we're talking about all the other problems in tennis that is something you need to be doing yeah. it's a sort I mean, of, kind of a duty as a like a he's like the face of the sport in a way he's up there he's, one of the, he's, a, he's, he's a, up there as one of the best and he needs to be, be setting an example for the younger players to be Let's doing be that. fair as well, like no matter how hard he worked when he was he he is still at one point in his career he was still ranked 200, 300, 400 in the world at one point no matter how hard he was playing yep. and if he thinks that if this happened during when he was playing he wouldn't have appreciated somebody doing it for him then I think it's a bit uh it's a narrow minded to be honest. If he was 
we wind back six years or whatever, and he was listening to number three in the world saying the same thing. I'm sure his opinions would be very different to what they are now. Well, and that's the last <laughs> thing we can say on that matter, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's yeah. Uh, move away from that. Yeah. Did, did you hear uh, Andy Murray's back in back in the winning column there with another tournament win? Is yeah, that going his, did going well, his record? Yeah, who did he beat? <laughs> Goffin in the final, was it? <laughs> I think it was Goffin. I know City Pass was playing well in it. Oh, mate. I can't Get really comment on a video game tournament, but... It seemed loud. It looked quite fun. What's this, it, what's this video game as well? It looked like the crappiest video game I've ever no, seen. No, it, it looked quite tennis. good. Like some no, of the, the actual, were quite impressive. No, but the actual game itself. I played on PlayStation games that looked better than that about ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, know, like it ATP looks, Matua, something or another. It's it, Spanish. Yeah, it's all, it looks so. It looks so old school. Like it's, we're supposed to be like up in technology these days. It looked like one of the worst games I've ever seen. But that's not really a good Murray, game out there, really. No, that's what. That's another thing. The gap see? in the market. Exactly. I'd probably just promote the big three that, again. No, that would more. still help <laughs> tennis. So I'd have kids playing tennis games. There's loads of things what can be done. Like, it's, it's a, there's a lot of work to be done. Since virtual sure. tennis went, it was. But mate, it says a lot about Andy Murray anyway. What's he doing? Winning? He must be playing a lot of video games at the moment. Then Rafa was giving him a lot of stick as well because he was going to bed at nine o'clock because he had kids, and he was like, "Well, he's like, I can't play any later than nine o'clock because I've got to." Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I've got, to, got to be up early in the morning. That's after like, Rafa yeah. got the video thing working. He's not really oh, got the technology. I'm surprised he was able to play the game at all. It's was probably out there. He, he probably needed someone to help him join it. He's probably just in the in his gym working on that left bicep. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Did you yeah, see her, uh, what's her name? Andreescu. Yeah, I did. She was warming up in her front room once. She, she yeah, that had all the gear. Out of, like music, mate. And then she pulled out her bag, the, the, the controller. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. I saw uh, something else which was a little bit controversial. Of, uh, we had big Nick Kyrgios's birthday that just came this past weekend. And then a nice birthday present from Stefano Tsitipas was to put his mobile number on social media. How many calls do you reckon he got? Uh, well, from the look of... He posted something on Instagram and it looked like it said like 1,000-something missed call, like messages... Wow. For days, like it was just like scrolling up through all what of them. What do you do at this stage? Does he have to change his number? I guess. <laughs> yeah, must do. Like, that is so annoying, isn't it? <laughs> well, at least we know what Tita Pass is getting for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Curious is definitely stitching him back up again, surely. <laughs> so yeah, we've uh, had a video question come in from one of our biggest fans, Instagram fan, the Mr. Boy. World Lamb. <laughs> As he shall be known. Uh, yeah, no. yeah let's, uh, let me let me <laughs> big up as you said on the last. Big up, big up the lamb. Hi guys, if you had the opportunity to ask only one question each other to Novak Djokovic, what would it be? All right, so if you had one question to Novak Djokovic, to ask. what would it be? Yeah, Mate, I'd like so. to ask more than one. I'd probably ask a few questions to him. Yeah, I think what so. so. What was your what if you had PF pick one? Mm. Let's follow the question. What, what would your one question be? My one question, and I'll be thinking about mine. All right, I think my one question would be to Novak Djokovic would be, What was the one thing that made him make the step into getting into tennis? Because I know that he's from Serbia, and I know that maybe back then there probably wasn't the funding and stuff like that that there is now. Now we see an amazing plethora of players coming from Serbia, but back then. Like, there can't have been much cool for, or it must have been difficult to start off, like, playing tennis. So I'd just like to know how he came about starting that yeah, career. that's like, a good one. How... That's a good question. Mine's a bit more controversial. I would Ooh. ask him, <laughs> <laughs> I would ask him, what is more important to you? Is it being known as the greatest player in terms of, like, in comparison to the likes of, say, Federer, Nadal, or is it your overall uh, titles? So not just Grand Slams like ATP Masters tournaments and high ATP tournaments. Are you more concerned with winning loads of silverware or being considered as the greatest? Obviously, with winning more silverware, you're ultimately going to become more the greatest, but it's not, they're not direct, directly linked. A lot of them is like 
the perception of the, an audience or your own sort of statistical thing? I'd have to word the question a bit better than that. But <laughs> and that's along them sort of lines. That's the, that's what I would want to get. I would really want to know that, what his opinion on that was. Because a lot of people speak for him, like Djokovic's dad. There's an episode on that. Check that out if you've not already. Um, and different people. But like, I want to see, what does he think? Maybe he can answer, on him? Maybe he can answer our long debated question that we both have had, which is more important or which is better to win an ATP event or to be runner-up in a Grand Slam. Yeah, that's another one. We should do that on the next podcast. <laughs> yeah, so we will discuss this in a very well detailed discussion because we have very, very contrasting views on this one point. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, hopefully we've uh, answered your question, Mr. Worldland, by asking a question. Yeah, thanks for the question, mate. Honestly, if, you, if you're if you listening to these questions, please leave us some because we would love to talk about it because otherwise we go on about, we talk about random stuff. So if yeah, you can give us a question, that's brilliant. Yeah, we'll be happy leave in to the answer comments. it for sure. Indeed. Yeah, anything you want us to talk about, just leave it in the comments below. Or if you don't want to leave on the comments, send it on either Instagram or Twitter or whatever. But yeah, that'd be great. I guess we'll wrap this one up. Not much more else to talk yeah. about. I yeah. hope you enjoyed it. If you've not subscribed already and you've made it this far to the video, please subscribe. Make sure you've liked the video and just keep posting. We're going to keep posting new ones. I think we're going to post one every... We're posting podcasts every Tuesday and we've got the game show on Thursdays. Maybe the odd Saturday upload as well. So just keep up- updated with our channel. Uh, anything left to say, Ben? No, I think that's about it. I think, okay. yeah, just keep your eye on the channel. We might have a couple of bonus episodes coming out in between the Tuesday and Thursday regulars. Yeah. So, yeah. See Thanks you next for listening. Time. See ya.